right, it's one o'clock, so let's get started. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kyra Mann, CEO of Mito Action, and we thank you all for joining us for today's special Q&A with Dr. Jerry Vockley. I know these are really trying times for everybody, especially for the Mito, FAOD, and rare disease communities. So we want to sure, ensure that Mito Action is here to continue to support you in any way you need us and for us to help you navigate these challenging times. Today's presentation will be recorded and available on the MitoAction website in the coming days. So please feel free to go back and check so you can re-listen and share with others who weren't able to be here with us today. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation using the Q&A feature on the bottom of your screen on the menu bar. If you're calling in via phone, feel free to submit your questions via email to info at mitoaction.org. It'll be an open forum, and so Dr. Vakli will be taking your questions live, so we encourage you to, um, you know, to, to participate and answer at, and ask questions throughout the, uh, the presentation. So we are honored to have with us today Dr. Jerry Vakli, who is internationally recognized as a leader in the fields of inborn errors and metabolic and fatty acid oxidation disorders. So welcome, Dr. Vakli. Thank you. Shall we get started? Let's go. Okay. Well, I, I thought I would start with a few general comments. Uh, I, I know there will be lots of, of, of fairly um, specific questions, but I, I, I wanted to uh, address some, some general ones first, and then we'll take some individual questions. Um, do remember that I, I can't answer specific questions about you or your child um, and, and their condition um, specifically. That, 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 those questions need to go back to your home physicians. Um, I, I, will, I, will, uh, I will, however, uh, do the best I can to place uh, the, the, the COVID-19 um, information that's available w uh, in, uh, in the context of, um, of uh, um, metabolic disease in general, fatty acid oxidation um, and uh, organic acidemias um, specifically. And most of this will also uh, pertain to uh, the, any of the energy uh, disorders in, including respiratory chain uh, deficiencies also uh, represented uh, by, uh, by mitoaction. <clears throat> so the, the um, <coughs> excuse me, this is not COVID-19. I have allergies, so <laughs> I'm, I, I, I promise I, I won't fall over <laughs> in of all this. Um, COVID-19 is a viral and, and you all know that um, in, in the context of metabolic disease, um, stress is something that makes your, makes your, uh, your, your disorder worse. It can uh, precipitate uh, acute uh, uh, symptoms uh, and uh, they, they, can, they, can, they can happen um, suddenly. Uh, influenza, one of the worst viral infections that we face on a routine basis, um, is, is often thought of as just a, a cold, just a virus when we talk to patients. And in fact, it's quite a serious infection um, and it, and it uh, 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 routinely leads to uh, a lot of uh, problems in, in our patients. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Got some stuff to drink here. <clears throat> COVID-19 um, is a virus. Um, it, it's hard to say whether it causes more or less metabolic stress than influenza. Um, most of the, um, the, 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 the problems that, that lead to individuals dying from COVID-19 are related to the lung. So it, it seems to have some sort of predilection to causing uh, pneumonia. And once that pneumonia sets in, <coughs> excuse me, it becomes um, a more, um, uh, more difficult for, for an individual uh, to recover. Um, whether whether the, the, the stress on the body prior to the development of, of, of the lung uh, issues 
uh, is, 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 is similar, worse, or, or, or less than influenza, um, we really don't have any way of knowing. Now that said, um, it is very fair to say um, that an individual with an inborn error of metabolism, um, an organic acidemia, fatty acid oxidation, or respiratory change, if you see, um, is at increased risk for um, having major problems related to that infection, uh, related to COVID-19, than the, 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 um, the, the general population. Uh, that may or may not manifest itself as, as additional problems with the lung, but it certainly represents uh, the, the kind of stress that is likely to um, tip an individual with one of these uh, disorders over into a, um, a, a metabolic crisis. So in general, the things that you should do if you feel like you have a COVID-19 infection are the same that you would do with any infection. That is, make sure you continue to keep calories going in. The calories keep your body from becoming catabolic, from breaking down um, its components to generate energy and allow you to use that energy uh, that, you're, that you're taking in the diet um, to fight infection regardless of the cause of the infection. Keeping up on fluids <coughs> so that you don't get um, uh, uh, dehydrated uh, and uh, keeping your fever under control using um, uh, Tylenol uh, or one of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Um, there was some uh, talk about the possibility that ibuprofen um, might be um, uh, there might be some increased risk with using ibuprofen uh, in in the in the face of COVID nineteen um, that that really hasn't been shown in any in any um, uh, a, a good good study um, and uh, it it's it is safer for you to get your fever down um, the the and and so if if um, uh, if you're using ibuprofen. Uh, for that, then you're going to be better off if your fever is down. Uh, probably better to go ahead and start with Tylenol just to be safe or safest. And then, but if that's not working, you can still alternate it with ibuprofen uh, or, uh, or or naproxen, as we usually tell you to do when you uh, when you have a fever. Um, the other um, main component in dealing with, with, uh, with, with this pandemic, with this infection, um, are all of the things that you're hearing from uh, the, the CDC and, and, and other uh, and, and media outlets uh, about preventing yourself from getting it. Um, personal distancing, uh, keeping yourself uh, six feet away from anybody who's a, a, a outside when, when you are, uh, isolating yourself as much as possible, Keep your trips to uh, the store to a bare minimum. Um, and if you have the, uh, one of these conditions, um, find somebody who can run your errands for you. Just stay home if you can. Um, if you have to go out, um, wear a mask. There's been a lot of controversy about whether or not a mask protects you. The cloth masks that are being advocated now um, because of a, a shortage uh, or, or an inability to provide everybody with a, with a, a medical quality procedure mask um, is, is um, not likely to um, prevent you from getting the disease, uh, but it does help you from spreading it if you're already infected. Um, and if it, 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 if, even if it has a little bit of an effect, um, it's, it's helpful. Please do leave the, um, uh, the, the medical grade uh, equipment for healthcare providers, first responders, uh, uh, any, anybody involved in taking care of patients with COVID-19. Um, it's, it's, it's critical for them to be able to protect themselves so they can help you uh, and, and they don't have any way of staying away from this infection. They're in the front lines. They have to be there. Um, so. Um, uh, uh, self-isolating um, mask if you if you have to go out um, and keep a keep a, a, a safe distance uh, from from you and anybody um, who is uh, around you. I guess I'll dive into the hydro um, 
uh, the um, uh, chloroquine uh, issue because that's one I'm sure a lot of people are going to be asking about. Um, first of all, when you hear that this drug has not been tested um, in the context of treating COVID-19, um, that is true. Um, there, there's been one very, very small, very poorly designed study, uh, almost anecdotal, meaning completely uncontrolled, um, where, where the conclusion was it looked like it might have made a difference. There are two other similarly poor studies that have said, no, we don't think it does. Um, it has been um, used, in, uh, looked, looked at in the context of many other viral infections uh, because of its proposed mechanism of action, um, including influenza, and it's not been shown to be effective in any of those. Um, so it's possible it might help against COVID-19, but at this point, that's it. Um, and the, 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 um, uh, the idea that, um, uh, or, 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 the, or the, 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 the proposition that because it hasn't been shown to hurt, um, it, 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 it's, it's safe, um, uh, is just, it's just too dangerous for you. Um, this drug does have some adverse effects um, that are particularly worrisome for fatty acid oxidation disorders. It can cause what's called prolonged QT syndrome. It's an arrhythmia of the heart that is frequent in long chain fatty acid oxidation disorders um, and is sometimes thought to be a cause of sudden death when we can't identify any other cause in, in long chain fatty acid oxidation patients who die suddenly and unexpectedly. Um, it um, may make a cardiomyopathy worse. It at least, um, the, the, the tendency for the long QT syndrome to develop is worse if you have car uh, underlying cardiac disease, including cardiomyopathy. So you just don't want to use that drug unless there's clear indication um, that it's, that it's um, uh, effective. Um, there's also um, uh, information out that suggests it might cause retinal problems, um, retinopathy. Uh, for those of you who have um, LCHAD um, deficiency or uh, TFP deficiency or any of the respiratory chain deficiencies, you're already at risk to have retinal disease. Um, and so this is um, a, a, a risk uh, that I don't recommend you take. Um, unless there is clear evidence that it's going to help you, um, you should assume that it's going to hurt you um, and, 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 uh, and, and, and just, uh, just stay away from it. Um, I think I'll go ahead and, and, and open it up to questions now and just deal with other things as they, uh, as they come along. So uh, Kyra, are you gonna read those to me or are you gonna send me something uh, by, by, uh, by text? Yeah, I'm gonna read them for you. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and get started. What are some of the symptoms that we should be looking out for and should cause concern when we consider that we have a family member or loved one that might be infected with COVID-19? It, it can be very difficult to differentiate COVID-19 from um, a, a standard upper respiratory infection, a cold, um, in, in, the, um, in the early going. Um, sore throat and dry cough are, are um, um, the two things that are oftentimes uh, seen first, at least in adults. And when I say um, a dry cough, I mean one that um, doesn't sound like you're clearing your throat. Unlike what I'm doing here with this, uh, with this, uh, with these allergies. <coughs> um, uh, a fever um, is is uh, very commonly a part of that. Um, and there's a very interesting finding, which is a loss of sense of smell or taste. If you have any of those symptoms and suddenly your, 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 your dinner just tastes flat to you or you really can't smell it at all, um, that's a, um, an indication that, uh, that you should, you should um, uh, potentially get yourself uh, tested. Um, children can have um, similar symptoms, but 
can often be less specific. So you might see um, a, a cold, you might see a cough. They can have some GI symptoms, uh, a little bit of nausea and vomiting, or even some diarrhea. Um, so very difficult to differentiate from uh, from 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 um, uh, other other viruses. If you haven't been exposed, it, that you know of, it doesn't mean you haven't been exposed, um, because there's there's um, uh, still some debate as to how frequently individuals can be affected, infected, and be infectious um, with COVID-19. But it 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 might be as high as 50%. Uh, so unless you literally haven't been out of the house and exposed to anybody else, um, you have to assume the possibility that you could have been exposed. If you have any of those symptoms, um, the uh, the best thing to do is uh, call your doctor, let them know what's going on. You do not want to run to the doctor's office and you don't want to run to the emergency room because you're almost uh, certainly going to get exposed to the virus if you haven't already um, in those settings. So do the things that I mentioned previously, um, calories, fluids, fever control, uh, rest as much as you can, and, uh, and, and um, only if those uh, uh, um, uh, measures aren't controlling your symptoms then um, you, you should you should go to the to the um, uh, the emergency room or call your call your local um, um, your PCP or your local metabolic doc. Okay. <coughs> so um, along those lines, as we know, there are often opportunities where outside of the COVID nineteen, it's necessary to go to the hospital um, for symptoms or or things that are going on. Considering the potential danger of exposure in going to the hospital. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about deciding when you should and should not go to the ER? Well, c clearly, if you have an emergency, you 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 have to go to the emergency room or seek uh, seek care. Um, if you are a, a a fatty acid station patient and you're having an episode of rhabdomyolysis, <coughs> excuse me, speak to your local uh, your local metabolic doc, and you might need to come to the hospital. Uh, you might ask them, can you? have me bypass the emergency room and admit me directly. Um, the, you, you can avoid the, 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 the biggest risk there, or at least have them put you, uh, take you right out of the emergency uh, room, waiting room and, and into, a, and into a, a, a safer space. Um, if you're in an accident, if you think you got a broken bone, uh, you, you gotta get to the emergency room um, or an urgent care center to have that evaluated. Um, so I think this falls into the category, you just have to use common sense. Um, and if it's something that, that um, uh, has, has potentially um, uh, uh, an adverse outcome for you, if you don't go to the hospital, then you've got to go to the hospital regardless of COVID-19. Take your mask. And I, I, I suspect that it, um, uh, when you walk into an emergency room, someone's probably going to hand you one anyway, but take your mask and, and, and uh, um, uh, a personal distance, six feet away from anybody else in the, emer in the, in the waiting room as you check in. Perfect. Okay. The next question. I have two children with MCAD. While I know children aren't normally hit hard with COVID-19, if they were to get it, are nebulizers safe to use at home? Um, Let's talk a little bit about kids and, and COVID-19, and for that matter, um, uh, age, age in general. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of um, uh, talk on, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the, the media about how older individuals, and uh, um, that, that really um, is, is, is defined as 60 and above. 60 is not old. Um, uh, uh, the the um, uh, are are at increased risk for for um, uh, the, the the more severe uh, um, uh, side effects or, or or problems with COVID-19, and that's true. But um, anybody can be affected, and anybody can have one of the more severe um, uh, uh, presentations. Uh, probably uh, uh, over half of the of the individuals um, who are uh, hospitalized uh, are are under the age of sixty, uh, so it happens. Um, children um, probably uh, right now are, are are recognized to be only somewhere between five and ten percent of um, identified um, 
patients with COVID-19 infections. However, that doesn't mean they don't have it. They're more likely to be asymptomatic. Um, and, and at least thus far, um, it does seem like they're at lower risk of having um, a, a, uh, one of the more severe uh, manifestations. Um, your question relative to inhaler um, uh, um, makes me assume that, that your kids have a problem um, with, with reactive airway disease, and so you have an inhaler around in case they have an asthmatic attack. Um, if, if they are showing respiratory symptoms, um, if, they're, if they're having this kind of allergic cough, um, or, or they're, or they wheeze, uh, and, and, uh, and, and it's, and it's a situation where you would otherwise use their inhaler, um, absolutely use their inhaler. Guidance right now is that inhalers are, um, safer than nebulizers. So if your kids can use either one, opt for the inhaler because there's less dispersion of, of droplets into the, um, atmosphere, into the environment, uh, than, than with, uh, with, a um, uh, a nebulizer, but if you have to use a nebulizer, put your mask on and just go ahead and use it. Um, I should also probably um, ad ad address the question of: has, has, Do we know of anybody with any of our diseases that have had COVID nineteen? Um, and and um, the the, um, the 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 answer is a little difficult. Um, I. My answer is no. I don't know of anybody that has it, but that's because they haven't been reported. Um, there are some, um, uh, I've seen some comments coming from metabolic centers in Italy and Spain that have said, yes, our patients are getting it and they, you know, we just treat them more like any other viral infection. But I don't have any specific data um, uh, on that. But if you look at the relative um, uh, uh, frequency of, of, of these disorders, so far, there have been 350,000 reported COVID-19 cases in the United States. Some of those have to have some of these disorders, just by definition, um, and, and unless, these, uh, unless our conditions protect us, which they certainly shouldn't. Um, so there, there are um, likely patients with, with uh, uh, metabolic disease who, have, who, who are in that, in that uh, um, a number of, of affected patients probably some even in the category of patients who have, have um, died um, and we, we just won't know about it until all the statistics are accumulated, you know, probably months or years from now. Yeah. Thank you for that. The next question is, if you are a carrier of COVID-19, will you have antibodies? And the second part is at some point, should we have our kids tested for antibodies when the testing is more available? Um, the, 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 any, any viral infection generates antibodies. Um, that's how we become immune to infections. That's how we get vaccinations. Um, the, the, the body generates an antibody response. The type of that antibody response um, is, it determines how strong um, the resistance is, the immunity is to the disease in the future, um, and whether or not you are immediately protected uh, from it. There, there are um, a number of different kinds of antibodies and they all have uh, letter names. So there's IgG, um, that's the one that, that everybody sort of thinks about as when you have an immunity to um, a previous infection, you've got IgG floating around in your body that can, that can glom on to whatever it is that's attacking you um, and take care of it before it has a chance to come back and get you again. Um, however, IgM is the first antibody uh, that, is, that is mounted in an, in an immune response. Um, and, and while that will help clear an immediate infection, um, it doesn't say that you're, long, the, that you're, that you're um, uh, immune long-term. Most of the time, the IgM, um, uh, uh, IgM precedes IgG uh, development, and most of the time, uh, if you've got an IgM, you will develop IgG eventually, um, but you need to know what the, what the type of antibody that you have is. There's one other type of antibody, IgA, and that gets, down into, uh, gets excreted out into your lungs um, and, and can protect you um, even before something gets into your, um, into your bloodstream. 
Um, so everybody will develop an antibody response unless you have a, a, a genetic deficiency in that. Um, in the short term, um, it probably doesn't help you to know that you have that antibody unless they're telling you specifically that it's IgM or IgG. Um, long term, um, it may help you depending on the life uh, of, of, of this, of this um, virus. There will certainly be large studies out there, and we hope that we'll be conducting one of them um, on, on to, to see how many people got um, this disease, how many of them knew they had it, and, and therefore how many of them were asymptomatic, and now how many of them are, are immune. Very helpful if you're a healthcare provider, for example, and now you know you're in the emergency room and you know at least that you don't have to worry about get being being uh, being in, being infected with this um, same um, agent. Probably not worth your while um, to have that test done unless we see another round of infection. You know, there's some thought that once the first pass is over. Um, until we get an, uh, uh, an, an immunization to it, there may be some additional rounds of infection, in which case, if the test is readily available and you can have it done, you probably would want to have it done so you know whether or not you're um, at, at risk. Okay, there we go. Thank you so much for that. Um, my three-year-old son has V-clad and hyperthyroidus. Um, and it looks like it is going to be admitted to the hospital. How can I protect him from getting ill while in the hospital? You have to trust your hospital. Um, your hospital should be, um, um, it, 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 you, you didn't say why um, your child was going into the hospital, but if it's because of um, an episode of, of uh, metabolic decompensation, they should be putting uh, him or her um, in, a, in a room that is not exposed um, to, to um, infectious uh, uh, patients. Right now, hospitals are trying to cohort them into um, separate parts of the hospital that may or may not be uh, 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 completely possible. Um, but then everybody um, uh, the, should, should be taking precautions uh, who's, who's caring for your child. Um, here, here at um, uh, uh, Children's um, uh, Hospital of Pittsburgh, uh, we've got a lot of things in place. Um, first of all, everybody who's in the hospital um, uh, has to wear a mask. Um, if you're going in to see a patient, um, uh, we, 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 we wear the mask. Um, we are limiting the number of people who see a, 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 a patient. You know that endless stream of patient, people who come in um, uh, to, to see your child when admitted. First there's the intern, then there's the resident, then there's the fellow, then there's the uh, general attending, then there's the metabolic fellow, then there's the metabolic attending, and, and, and all you wanna do is go to sleep, right? Um, well, that's not happening now. Uh, we're, we're sending one person into the room. They're responsible for telling everybody else what's going on. Um, and and uh, and that limits the um, the exposure uh, to to uh, somebody who has no known uh, viral exposures. And then finally, um, the COVID nineteen patients um, uh, should should really be very very well um, uh, isolated, cohorted away from from uh, the other patients uh, in in the hospital. Um, so uh, I, I can tell you, for example, that um, as of the start of this this uh, uh, webinar, there were no um, COVID-19 patients in Children's Hospital. Um, uh, so far, it hasn't hit us. Um, the, 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 we, we, we also haven't had any of our um, staff affected. Uh, and, and so you're actually probably safer in children's here uh, than you are out in the street where there are people walking around who have the infection. That's not gonna last. So you don't wanna be in the hospital if you don't have to. Um, but if those kinds of, uh, and, and I, I did mention hand washing, um, in and out of the room, everybody should be wash, hand washing. Um, and I think I didn't say that in my general um, comments. Uh, as, as one of the, the effective ways, just constantly washing hands. Um, so those are the things that will keep your, your son or daughter um, safe in the hospital. 
Okay, great. This one might be a little bit too specific, but we're going to give it a go. Is 1.5 times maintenance DT still okay on the heart and lungs if, if COVID-19 is causing inflammation in the lungs and what are the risk of fluid overload? Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty specific question. I'll, I'll, try, to, I'll try to be um, um, general and hopefully give you some information, um, but, 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 but this is going to be the kind of thing that, that, that your metabolic physicians are going to be standing there working on with your intensivists. Um, you mentioned D10 one and a half times normal maintenance. Um, many of you will recognize that as our, 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 our secret sauce, our magic recipe. If you come into the hospital, we give you that. The reason we give you that is that gives you um, an amount of glucose that, that we, we know is sufficient to start shutting down catabolism and negative energy balance and turning it back into positive energy balance. So when, when we don't have anything else that we can do, um, that's what we do. Um, and, and, uh, and, and, and so um, that will likely still be the first line of, of, of treatment um, if, if you happen to be admitted uh, for, uh, for COVID. 19. Um, you're right to worry that, that um, uh, in the context of lung inflammation caused by pneumonia, caused by the virus, uh, that you can, you can have uh, fluid leakage into the lung. And, and so um, that will have to be watched um, very, uh, very carefully. And, uh, and your intensive care team and your metabolic doctors will, uh, will, will know to, um, uh, to, to do that. Okay, great, thank you so much. Um, <coughs> hospitals near me have stopped admitting peds. If I need to take my son to the hospital, should I go to the local ER and then be transferred? Or should I take the time to drive to the next closest hospital so that we are only in one ER? Um, Depends on how far you have to drive, uh, and I'm sorry to, to to sort of dodge that question on you, but but um, the 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 um, is it is certainly safer to only be in one emergency room, um, but how sick you your 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 you are or your son or daughter is um, is is really going to determine um, whether it's safe for you to take that extra time to drive to. Um, your local metabolic center, ideally, that's the place we'd like you, um, or the next closest hospital that's taking pediatric patients if it takes you too long to get to the local hospital. Um, if you are thinking you need to go to the emergency room, please call your, your, your PCP or your metabolic team or, or both uh, and get their guidance as to, as to um, uh, what the best course of action is. We can usually tell by talking to you um, what we think the relative risk is, and and so um, uh, uh, your you, your 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 docs can uh, give you a better idea of of whether you should go to the local ER um, and get yourself transferred uh, versus uh, trying to get to a, a distant one. Okay, great, thank you. The next question is: I know people that have been turned away from getting tested for COVID nineteen because they do not have enough symptoms. Do people with underlying health conditions like FAODs get priority for testing? And if so, does a patient need to provide proof of their condition? You're right, there are not enough tests nationally yet. Um, and um, thus far, the answer here has been having an underlying condition has not been enough to get you a test. Um, because the, 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 the the question that, that you have to ask is, is that test going to change um, your acute management? Um, it certainly will, will um, affect whether or not you have to, um, um, how long you have to be isolated, how long you have to be in quarantine. Um, but the initial um, therapy is going to be the same regardless. It's those steps that I mentioned early to tr earlier to try to keep yourself from becoming, um, uh, get, getting into a metabolic crisis. 
Um, and it would only be if you got into a metabolic crisis, ended up going to an emergency room, or even admitted directly to a, to, to a hospital, my preference, um, that, that um, if you had any symptoms that, said that were suggestive of a viral illness, uh, would, you, would you likely end up uh, getting a, 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 a COVID test? That could change very much over the next few days. And, and, and unfortunately, much of what I'm saying is very, very time dependent. Uh, and, 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 and so definitely keep an eye on the news and, and talk to your docs if you feel like you have some, some, some reason to be concerned. Um, but um, there, there's, there's, there's still a suggestion that more, more tests will be made available um, in the coming days um, and, 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 and weeks. And, uh, and, and, and so if you feel like you need one, call your care provider um, and ask, and they'll tell you what the local availability of one is. Great, thank you. The next question, is it recommended to stay away from the hospital if you have to go there for IV treatments for other disorders? And, the te uh, and this, this particular patient has POTS and MCAD. Um, so I assume you're asking about IV fluids for your blood pressure, given that you, that you mentioned the POTS. Um, and and um, all, all I can say is having a blood pressure is, uh, that's, that's too low is, is also not good for you. And if you can't get it up by using any of the other means that you usually use, uh, presumably some, some pressure medication um, and, and oral fluids, um, and you need IV fluids, and you're not set up to get them at home, so a lot of, a lot of qualifications there, then you have no choice but to, get to go to the hospital. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, we're in Canada, and my daughter has Al Chad. It looks as though our chief medical officer is conducting a study for a malaria drug to treat COVID-19. Is this the same drug you were speaking about? Yes, that's probably the same one. I, I, I don't know about, the, about the, 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 the Canadian study in particular, but I assume that's it. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I have my son tucked away in the house for the past three weeks with, with an occasional car, car ride. Is there anything else I should be doing to keep him safe? Yeah, keep yourself safe. <laughs> Um, being 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 in 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 quarantine with with uh, uh, a, a a partner or kids or, or uh, uh, any anybody for without being able to get out is is uh, is, is is tough. Um, so um, uh, the, the, uh, do do um, uh, do give yourself some some uh, a, a chance to to, to uh, have, a, have a sanity break some way, shape, or form. Uh, beyond that, the answer is no. Um, the, 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 uh, even, even, in, even in the house, making sure you're washing your hands fairly frequently um, and, and uh, um, uh, keeping some distance when, when at all possible um, is, is, is reasonable. Um, but there's not much else you can do in, in, in as, as long as, uh, you're not going out uh, and, and getting yourself exposed as well. So you stay safe, your child stays safe. Perfect, thank you. I've heard that if this gets worse and there is a lack of equipment that they will choose healthier individuals and that FAOD children individuals would be on the list for those to be excluded for immediate care since they have a metabolic condition. Is there truth to this? No discussion of that, um, and 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 in and in fact, I, I think it would go the other way around. Um, at, at least in a pediatric center, um, everybody who comes into a pediatric center ha uh, is 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 uh, um, uh, a, a patient who has um, decades of long life ahead of them um, by definition. Uh, if you can keep them healthy, um, we're all trained to take care of chronic disease. Um, and we would never let the presence of a chronic disease um, uh, in influence our, our, um, uh, our, our, our use of otherwise life-saving um, inter interventions. Um, remember, we don't have any reason to think at this point that because of these diseases, you are at an, an increased risk to have a problem with your lungs. That's what's killing people. It's the lungs. And so... <laughs> You will be um, 
you will be cared for uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the same way as anybody else. Uh, and and uh, it, it may well even be that you have priority because you have other risks that, that can be ameliorated by, by bringing you to the hospital um, and, and treating you more aggressively rather than saying, why don't you tough it out at home and see if we can, we can get through this. Okay, great, thank you. What do you think about taking your child out to the park to get exercise in early morning hours before people are outside, especially for people who have no green space? Yeah, I, at, at, at this point, um, most, um, most stay at home recommendations are including an exception to go out and get personal exercise um, in, a, in, a, um, uh, in, a, in a setting that allows you to keep your, 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 your distance. So if you can stay six feet away from anybody else, uh, then, 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 uh, then, then absolutely uh, feel free to go out. Um, the, the outdoors are going to be safer than indoors. Um, so, so don't make that exercise a grocery shopping trip. Um, make it a, make it a, um, a walk around the block. Um, uh, uh, stay away from anybody, any, any congregating kids, you know, if, uh, if their the kids don't pay attention sometimes and they might be down the street shooting basketball, uh, stay away from them, go around the corner, be, uh, uh, and, and as long as you're staying away from others, uh, the, the exercise and, the, and the, 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 the sanity of getting out will be good for you. Yeah, great. Thank you for that. Any additional complications foreseen for patients who also have liver transplants? Um, we do have some, some private communications from our colleagues in, uh, uh, in Italy who have taken care of patients with uh, liver transplants. Um, and uh, they have not seen um, anything uh, in those patients that hasn't been seen in, um, in, in anyone else. The, um, the immunosuppression that is used in, uh, chronically in, in patients with liver transplant um, is not, um, doesn't affect uh, the, the response against respiratory viruses um, very much. So I can't say there's no increased risk of getting infected, um, but um, uh, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't seem like there's a, there's a, um, a, a big increased uh, risk that, that you face uh, over everyone else. Keep in mind uh, that it's, it's, it's very, very limited data. Um, and, and I'll just keep coming back to saying the best thing you can do is stay safe, stay home, wash your hands, um, uh, personal distancing and, and self-isolation to minimize whatever risk they're, 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 that, that, you, that you face. The next question, when we go for walks or bike rides around the neighborhood, should we still wear masks? We do stay away from the neighbors. I would. Um, I, 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 I think this is a situation where um, it, you, it, it, it's, it's better safe than sorry. This is droplet spread. Um, we, 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 six feet is a fairly safe distance. Um, but if somebody sneezes six feet in front of you and you walk into it, it's no longer six feet. So I would wear the mask. Thank you. The next question is, um, are kids with FAODs at higher risk given underlying risk of cardiomyopathy? Um, so far, there, as, uh, I, I, I haven't heard uh, or seen anything in the medical reports um, about, um, uh, about cardiomyopathy. Um, there, there's, there's, some, there's some suggestion um, that if you have underlying uh, cardiac disease, um, that, uh, that 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 you that the that the lung disease um, is 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 um, likely to um, it's a, it's a stress on on the heart, um, but but uh, um, there's nothing about the cardiomyopathy or, or fatty acid oxidation that we know about that should make the lung disease um, any any worse. I do worry that if you have a cardiomyopathy and you undergo any metabolic stress. COVID-19 or otherwise, um, that, that, your, that your, your, your cardiomyopathy um, could get worse. So your physicians certainly should do a good physical exam looking for signs 
of, of uh, worsening uh, cardiomyopathy. Doesn't mean you have to have an echo, um, but maybe an EKG and certainly a good exam where, where a physician's able to listen to your chest for signs of, of uh, cardiac failure. Okay, great. Next question. Are there additional measures we can take to manage a crisis at home to avoid a trip to the hospital? And the example that they cite is um, assembling you know, Gatorade with MCT oil um, to help with hydration issues. All of the things that you usually do when you're sick at home are the things that you should do if, if you're worried about a COVID-19 infection or something else and you want to stay away from the from the hospital. Calories, uh, depending on your, on your condition, that's going to be different. Um, so the MCT works for long chain fatty, fatty acid station defects and the organic acidemias and the respiratory chain defects, but not for MCAT. Um, uh, so, 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 so calories, including um, um, uh, Pedialyte with extra sugar, uh, MCT, if it's, if it's appropriate for you, your metabolic formula, if you're on one, um, and just eating a regular diet. Um, we usually, <coughs> excuse me, we usually tell our patients um, to increase their calorie intake by a quarter or a third um, if they're under metabolic stress. In other words, if they have a, uh, an illness. Um, so it's a, a rule of thumb you can shoot for. Great. So here's a lighter question. Any suggestions on ways to get a three-year-old to wear a mask? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't get some of my faculty to wear a mask, let alone three-year-olds. Um, <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> you just got to keep it on. I, you know, just uh, I got the hope, uh, eventually, um, <laughs> excuse me, it's pretty amazing. Uh, I'd I put on a mask if I weren't talking to, a, um, to, 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 to my screen right now. Um, uh, it's, it's amazing what kids will get used to. And while they'll turn it off, take it off eventually, um, usually, uh, eventually they'll, 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 they'll leave it on. The, the kind that are easier, I don't have one handy here to show you. They have, instead of the tie on ones, they have a little elastic loop that fits behind your ear. Those are harder for them to get off. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm sure that's something a lot of parents are struggling with right now. Yeah. Um, another question is, once, once this is all said and done, the stay-at-home orders are released, what are your thoughts about what will be the necessity for patients with FAOD to continue to wear masks out in public and to continue to maintain levels of caution um, since there are so many unknowns about COVID-19? Um. I would, I would say that everybody, not just, not just patients with metabolic disease, but everybody really ought to be looking at a cautious reintegration once, once things are, 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 um, uh, are, 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 are lifted. Um, I would assume that schools are not going to go back into session um, uh, the, the, for, for kids, uh, the, that that um, uh, you're, 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 you're going to be um, dealing with neighborhood uh, um, um, exposures rather, rather than school exposures. It's a little bit easier to handle with, with, uh, with, with, with kids. Uh, but if you're going back to a job and you have a fatty acid oxidation disorder, um, I, you might, you might, you should at least work on maintaining that, that personal distance um, until it's clear that everything is, 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 is resolved. Um, I, whether you want to wear a mask for, for that period of time um, uh, or when, how long you feel comfortable before going out without a mask, um, I think is probably, um, I, I can't give you good scientific data on that. And it's going to be personal, uh, personal preference. I think you just have more. More of the issue is going to be how quickly it's lifted. So if it's if the if the if the 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 restrictions are lifted prematurely, then absolutely you follow precautions. Um, if if there's good agreement and, and you're and you're not hearing people yell at each other uh, across the news channels, um, uh, the, then 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 it's probably safe and you don't have to worry too much about it. Okay, great. Thank you. 
Would handkerchiefs be as effective as masks since you can still contract the virus but would keep others safe if you can? <coughs> well, um, anything is better than nothing. I've seen you know, people are, are tying kerchiefs, they're tying um, rolled up t-shirts, they're doing all sorts of things. I've seen patterns uh, uh, in, in, on, on um, uh, email feeds for masks. Uh, I know of groups that are sewing masks to be distributed to healthcare providers. Um, so whatever you can do is, is what you can do. Um, and and um, uh, I, 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 I guess I wouldn't go as far as saying a, ma a cloth mask or a, or a kerchief isn't going to be completely useless. It's just not going to be the same as a, as a surgical grade procedure mask. So um, if it's what you've got, um, use it. Uh, I, I think if you, if you uh, 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 Google um, uh, uh, COVID-19 face mask pattern, you'll find something in, a, in an instant. And, and, uh, uh, and if, you're not, if you're not so, uh, so uh, talented to make one, I'm sure you could find someone who will help you out. Perfect. Thank you. So I have one last question before we wrap up. Um, and that question is, um, oh, hang on one second here. Um, I'm from Mexico. And from, for some reason, we have much less COVID-19 than in the US. Are there any studies showing any differences due to cultural differences or ethnicities and why some people are getting it and not? Not, not right now. There, there are, are certainly going to be some factors that are identified down the road that, that are, that are, 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 are um, uh, uh, protective against uh, this virus. It, it, there, there, are, there are lots of examples of those sorts of factors. Um, they, 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 they tend to be very minor effects, however, um, and they're only obvious when you look at them across a, a large um, population. It is true that we have fewer uh, reports of COVID from Mexico than we do uh, from, from um, uh, many countries. Uh, but then, you know, we also have fewer reports of COVID in some spots of U.S. than, than in others. So it's hard to know if it's exposure, um, if it's climate, if, if, it, if it's uh, something else in the environment, um, or, or if, it's, uh, if it's some um, in, in, in intrinsic factor um, that, that ultimately will, will show um, uh, us the way to coming up with medications or, or preventative uh, um, uh, immunizations to prevent the, the, the disease. Okay, great. Um, and then one, one, I'll give you one last question. So for a lot of patients in the rare disease community, this is their normal, right? Protecting from infection, um, you know, staying inside during flu season. What are your recommendations for families um, to help others understand how serious this is, because unfortunately, there are still are a lot of people who aren't taking this seriously. So, yeah. what is your recommendation to help communicate that? Well, I think any any time you uh, any any chance you have to advocate for that position, you should certainly do it. Um, I, I do think that there are a lot of people out there um, who are really probably for the first time stopping to think about what it means um, that being exposed to somebody else. Um, um, uh, could could make you sick or or kill you. Um, in in the rare disease community, in the metabolic community, we 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 live with that. You're right, um, and we we worry about it constantly. Um, and and um, and and I I think that a lot of individuals, uh, the vast majority of folks, by all reports, are 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 following. The, the lockdown recommendations. Yes, there are always going to be uh, disbelievers uh, who, who, who say, you can't convince me that I'm at any risk and therefore I'm just gonna go out and do what I can, what I, what I want to, even though they're putting you at risk. Stay away from them um, and, and, uh, and, 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 and be glad that most of the people around you are, are, are listening um, to, the, to, the, to the recommendations. But any chance you have to advocate uh, for for uh, the attention that that these deserve these diseases deserve, um, you certainly should take it. Absolutely, thank you so much. So, Dr. Rockley, I just want to give you one last um, opportunity to share any last thoughts or 
anything, uh, suggestions that you'd like to share with the community before we wrap up? I, I very much like the last comment, which is to say we've been this through. We've been through this before. The the rare disease community, the metabolic community, has been through this before all the time. Any infection out there is serious for us, and and uh, and 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 so um, while while this um, is fundamentally different from the re for the rest of society, um, you have at least a little bit of a leg up in dealing with it from a, from a personal, from a family, from a psychological standpoint um, that, I, that I hope gives you the resiliency that you need to get through this um, in, a, in, a, in a way that, that uh, um, may, may be difficult for others who've never had to, to, to face these issues before. Um, my, 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 my closing plea is, is, to, is to please um, stay safe. Um, uh, use precautions, um, eat well, stay healthy, um, and, and stay in contact with your healthcare providers um, if, you, if you do have um, any medical concerns. Um, we, will, we, will, we will never um, turn you away from hospital care, but we'll try to make sure that you really need it before we bring you in and, and expose you to it. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Buckley. We are so appreciative of you taking your time today to share your expertise and to really ease the burden and the anxieties of the community. Um, this was incredibly helpful. I know that everyone is sitting at home and, and may still have a lot of questions, so I would encourage you to, if you want to, still send those in to us at info at mitoaction.org, and we will continue to be here to help you and support you through this crazy, crazy time. Um, just so as a reminder, we are recording today's presentation and it will be posted on the MitoAction website for anyone who would like to listen again or share with others. We thank each and every one of you for joining us for today's presentation and we want everyone to be safe and healthy and if you need us, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much, Dr. Vakley. Thanks to all and please be safe. Bye-bye. Wonderful day. Take care.